Do you identify as an addict? Uh, not now. I definitely identify, um, you know, like alcoholism was a, a major problem. And it's interesting because that's um, nearly 14 years ago that I gave up drinking. But yeah, absolutely. It was the unpredictable behavior associated with that. Um, that was a scary thing. Like it could be that I would just go out and, you know, um, have one drink, but then another night I might go out and binge drink. And I think, um, Probably it was before I'd done any work on myself and I was using it as a crutch. And um, and also, you know, there's a lot of self-sabotage in there because I think I was a creative and I hadn't yet found an outlet. And I was, um, yeah, living life according to other people's expectations and hanging around the people that I'd always hung around. And they definitely weren't thought leaders. It's pretty hard they to were. stay sober if you're hanging around Chris Gray. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think when I met him, I was just like recently sober, and oh, it was fuck, like, "What? Sorry. You don't, you don't <laughs> drink?" I know, right? <laughs> but um, the thing is, you adapt, right? Like any party, guaranteed, one hundred percent, I will be the first person on the table, and I will be the first person <laughs> dancing, like, <laughs> and you know, because that's my personality. Yeah. So, um, so people sometimes go, "Oh, well, you're so kind of normal now. Why wouldn't you just go back to drinking?" I'm like. Ugh. Why would I risk that for one? Mm. And two, I don't miss it, you know. I think I'm naturally quite an outgoing, you know, um, self-confident kind of person and I don't really need that as a crutch or to prop me up anymore. Um, I was about to say something really bad. Do it. I will remember. Do it. Do it. (laughs) No, because it wasn't true and that will be taken out of context. (laughs) That'll be the snippet for the promo. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I have no filters. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why we get along so well. Um, you know, because I, I actually identify as an addict and it took me a long time to get to that place because I was um, I was addicted to amphetamines when I was 19. Yeah, for right. For a period of about 12 months. It just got into a bad scene. Yeah. Um, but then for the longest time I, I saw addictive tendencies coming in and out of my life in different ways. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never yeah. so much through alcohol, cannabis uh, yeah. and just behaviours, right? Yeah. And it wasn't until I, I really started to research and really try to understand, okay, well, what makes me different to other people? You know, why yeah, is it yeah. that some people can use a certain substance and they can, well, they can take a leave it and, and others like me, they, they can't. Yeah, yeah. And I actually just, like, it was actually one of the greatest personal development journeys that I've probably ever been on. Mm. Um, I'm not sure what work you've done. Have you done any work around the, the 12 steps or anything like that? Yeah, I have. Okay. D- did you find that work quite powerful from oh, a personal development perspective? Amazing. And I mean, I've dipped in and out of a lot of different modalities yep. um, from 12 steps, which I thought was phenomenal for so many reasons. Um, I think, and this is the funny thing, and I don't mean to cut you off, I apologise, but I actually think every person on the planet should go through the 12 steps. Regardless of you, you think you've got a, a problem or not, yeah. it is one of the most potent forms of personal development that I think I've ever discovered. I agree. And also one of the most grounding, mm. humbling experiences I um, I ever experienced because the, you know, in those rooms, every single person is equal. You know, it doesn't matter if you're... Ageless, nameless, rankless, blameless. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And, and that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And that really humanized everything for me. And I was like, wow, I'm just... I'm a person, you mm. know. Um, so that was really important. And then um, in 2004, I did something called the Hoffman Process, which is like an eight-day um, cathartic, highly intensive um, program, which is all around, um, you know, from journaling to meditating to rebirthing to bashing a lot of stuff with baseball <laughs> bats and lots of rituals and burning things and like phenomenal trip. You know, that those eight days were what really, really changed my life. Wow. And then um, I've done things called Path of Love. I've um, done it here and in Costa Rica, which was trippy, like the craziest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, I've been, I spent quite a lot of time in the Osho Meditation Center. It's on Netflix now. It's not a sexology anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Although, take what you want. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I've done a lot and I'm also really open. Like whilst I'm not religious, if someone says, come to church with me, I'm like, cool, I'll go to church with you. If someone says, come try this sweat lodge in, you know, the Amazon with me, I'll be like, cool, let's go try that. So I've tried um, a lot of things and, uh, and having a slightly addictive personality, I'm also aware that um, – I want to take from all of that what works for me mm. and I don't want to I choose I consciously choose not to stick with one modality on an ongoing 
basis because then I can I think it can almost become cult like and I what's the saying swap the witch for the bitch or whatever it is like I don't um I didn't get well to become a slave to another modality if that another makes form sense of behavior. Yeah, yeah but I'm fascinated god we could talk for and we need to do this off yeah. air as well <laughs> well we can do it on air but I am fascinated by human psychology and what makes us tick and I'm fascinated across all the different personal development and work that I've done now like um how much of it is similar but just with different flavors throughout but have you ever had the ayahuasca journey no I haven't yeah, but incredible. um incredible yeah, have you done it? Twice, yeah. Yeah, amazing. yeah, yeah. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Not for the faint-hearted. And yes. a lot of people, when they hear ayahuasca, you know, they think, they think you know, hallucinogenic drugs. They think, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. you're going to go and party for 12 hours. It is one of the most um, highly uncomfortable journeys you'll ever go through, but yes. incredibly rewarding. Very, very like, – it's, it's obviously – it's been actually used a lot in the treatment of alcoholism, uh, yeah. heroin addiction, amphetamine addiction, yeah, any yeah, form of addiction. Yeah. It's, it's quite an interesting process. Yeah. If you ever get the opportunity, if it's something that calls you and she will tap you, you will, let you, she, you will know when yes. she calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's something yeah. incredible. Yes, I, yes, we'll talk more about that later. <laughs> <laughs> she has tapped. She is she calling. Has, she's tapping. <laughs> She's tapping. <laughs> She's got a booty call on out there somewhere. There you have it, guys. Thanks for tuning in to Unstoppable with me, your host, Kerwin Ray. And please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you get to see all of these interviews in the, the flesh. Share this podcast with your friends. I would love to hear what you guys think. Thanks for joining us.